uh, past Sunday. So I'm on the road. So um, I will be taking the call on my phone while I drive back to the city. And Jean will be uh, sharing the screen with the agenda for everyone to be aware of it. Um, so we're going to start today's call with um, a different question than usual. Um, it could be it could be something simple. It could be something more complicated. But what other cultural practice have you seen in other DAOs that you will like that you have enjoyed? It doesn't mean that it has to be replicated in our organization, but something that you think um, could be uh, could be could be enjoyable. Um, I I will start. Um, on the past days, I have been seeing different DAOs and this concept of the roles and how they have they people can self-assign roles and sort of you know this tool of self-acknowledgement before everyone else acknowledges you i think it's quite interesting to to sort of research and and the idea of having this uh role for everyone or the accessibility that it brings to people uh that's on one side and the other side the practice the nice practice that i saw in um I think it was ENS, um, the ENS DAO, no, sorry, it was Rarible. Rarible, when they when you join uh, their server, there is always a tag team of two people who message the person. And like, sort of, if you if you type in the general or you introduce yourself in, in their server, they, they tag team you and they sort of, hey, how are you? We saw that you present, you know? So it was nice to have that human contact. So those two cultural practices were quite interesting. Um, so I will stop on that and I will pass it on to LB. Uh, yeah, in another community that I'm in, SourceCred, we use hand signals uh, during our virtual meetings. And it works best when everybody is like on video, but it doesn't have to necessarily be that, but it just makes it a lot easier for the facilitator to kind of see like, to keep stack and see like who wants to talk next and do they want to reply to what, the, what is being said or do they want to like start a new topic and it can just really really help everybody to like help with the facilitation. Uh, yeah, I'll pass to my mom. Thanks, Olivia. What is the intentions, instructions? All right, you uh, can intentional instructions and or you can uh, go to the question of um, what uh, what other cultural practices in other DAOs do you uh, do you enjoy or have enjoyed? Okay, well intentions. I wanna catch up with what you guys have been doing. Um, it's amazing all the work that you guys have assembled in such a short amount of time. I want to see if I can help with something or just learn to uh, to know. Uh, distractions. Um, I'm updating the TC Gitcoin grant and what other cultural practices in other DAOs. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think the praise ritual is takes takes a price from all the other. I mean, other DAOs. I'm not that much active in in other consolidated DAOs. Uh, more on new ones. So I wouldn't know for their cultural practices. And uh, um, I'll pass it to you, Ed, because I don't know who who hasn't gone yet. Thank you. How about you, as a laser? Hey, hello everyone. Uh, I really don't know about drug practices, but I really like the reward system that One High Pass. I think that that uh, reward system um, promotes the contributions and you know the the social contributions about the people, not the full work. Contrib contributions making friends and that stuff and I pass it to Jane C. 
Hi. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure about these questions. I mean, I I I learned the most was the idea of um, welcoming people by doing it or one on one by DM or by doing it in once a person introduce uh, him or herself into the journal channel. So I think that's a nice to see welcoming people. And I pass it to um, I think bye bye B. Bye bye B. <laughs> uh so one thing that i really like is how grid flows in many DAOs. It, it's it's kind of neat and i like uh i like the cohorts that uh meta game does so they like have uh like uh and they have a very like active on boarding team even though like the server is closed uh it's supposed to be a closed server they still have like a very active so that's something that i like uh and that's pretty much it where where did you say the cohorts were by me meta game and who do you pass it on by by me uh, uh i think it got web 3 hasn't gone you are right. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. This is my first time hearing Communitas. So um, answering the question, the question well, uh, yesterday I see a DAO called uh, Zero Edge Ventures, who works like, um, like a venture capital company, but all in crypto, you know. So the users and creators, uh, deeply care about integrating with blockchains and their communities. Um, if the DAO, if the DAO, the uh, a project uh, who is interesting, they help them. It's like um, like a way to 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 give funds to uh, to a project, but with a DAO. So that's interesting. And thank you. Thank you, Edgar. Um, yeah, and thank you, Jane, for taking notes. Um, you are still uh, the one to go, I think. Very good. Um, yeah, I don't remember the, na the name of the DAO, but it's a popular DAO, and I, I, I think it's uh, rather large in India. Um, was, uh, I think it's Index Co-op, I think is what it was called. But um, they have uh, ranks. And uh, I, I thought that was kind of an, an interesting concept. And you can, um, it, it, it's a little bit automated with, with a bot mechanism, but you can do quite a bit of, of the tasks ranking up um, by just interacting with the bot and with a heavily programmed uh, spreadsheet. So I, I don't know if, if we uh, would want to do all that, but just the, the concept of you know, levels up or ranks is, is kind of neat. Um, yeah, so. and, uh, I sir. yeah, I think um, we, we discussed at some point this concept of the level and the ranks. The only complication is how you gamify and make it not a competition uh, to sort of, you know, be, uh, be a hierarchy of, oh, I'm cooler because I have the highest rank. You know, um, so that's that's a challenge I think with uh, rank related um, approaches. Anyways, um, also the hand signals. Yes, the hand signal. I think um, it, it's something that it's interesting to see how we sort of manage to pull it out in a without the um, without the screen on, without the camera on, mainly because I think it's essential. Like every time I'll be uh, put their camera on it's so easy to understand what they are trying to say or if they approve or not and i think that's a practice that um it could be um could be really like empathic and also uh, participatory without having to mute or interrupt anyone but 
the the process to get to that practice is the one that is challenging. Like how, you know, how people actually manage to uh, do it. Do you do you have any um advice on that, Elby, on how Sanskrit accomplish uh, this? <laughs> yeah, I was actually the one who created the hand signals and uh, implemented them at SourceCred and at our community call, which is kind of like the orientation call here, um, which I would always facilitate. I would often start, there was a couple things that I would always say at the beginning of the community call where we were welcoming in new people. And one of them was, I was explain the hand signals. And then I had like a written document where you could read about the hand signals if you didn't like hearing about them. And then we would just practice it within that call. And then it just kind of like was something that the entire community used. And we made it clear that like you didn't need to have your camera on if you didn't want to. And we made it clear that if it were, you were struggling with the hand signals, you could always just raise your hand instead. And I, as the facilitator or whoever the facilitator was, would like help you figure out what it was that you were trying to communicate. But it just kind of took over. You know, once everybody kind of understands it and is using it and finds it useful, it just kind of keeps perpetuating itself. We can talk more about it if you want. Check. Yes, of course. If you can drop the link to your hand signal sort of tutorial on on the agenda, it would be amazing. I mean, I would love to take a look at it and uh, maybe also on the orientation channel or like on our own community call, try to see, um, just probably take a few of them or implement them all. I don't know. I think this this is interesting and it's it's a really nice um communication verbal non-verbal communication exercise that it's that it's interesting to to do. So thank you for that Dolby. And before we pass on to the topic, Nate, we are talking about inventions and instructions or uh any cultural practice that you have enjoyed in other DAOs that you would like to share with us. Um, yeah, intentions are just to catch up with what's going on with the community tells working group, uh, distractions I don't have any currently. Uh, my favorite uh, cultural practices are this one, actually, the icebreakers. I think it's really unique, and uh, I think each working group has a different flavor of, of icebreaker, and uh, as time has moved on uh, since the beginning of the TEC, it's kind of evolved, and so, like, you know, you had the communications is more focused on like, uh, you know, what what music you like, what movies you like. Uh, Soft Gov is centered around uh, the hard questions. Uh, you know, gravity is about you know your inner feelings and and kind of how you approach conflict. And so each of these have kind of taken on a world of its own, and I think we'll continue to see that. And so uh, these icebreakers are kind of like a jumping off point, <clears throat> and they've evolved slowly over time. And I'm I'm excited to see where it heads. So that's my favorite. Yeah, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, I think uh, the icebreakers, it's uh, its something that has evolved naturally within the working groups in the organization. And for me, they are quite relevant because it's a nice way to sort of incorporate feedback in a, in a non-aggressive or put you in the spotlight process um, and, and to sort of gather feedback and gather people's intentions and gather people's um, things that they appeal to them. Um, so for me, that's what the icebreakers are for. And I think um, they could be explored in a deeper way down the lane to see how uh, we can um, make them uh, a temperature check or, or a signaling tool for working groups. Uh, does anyone else want to contribute something to this conversation before we move on? I will come down to zero. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so a few things. Um, just for everyone knowledge, um, I don't think she has disclosed this publicly. Maybe she did. Uh, Tam will be absent for the next 10 days, most likely. Um, her daughter got COVID. And the thing is that um, she lives with her two daughters. Therefore, if one gets COVID, the other one needs to stay also at home which implies double work, which implies a lot of um, homework and a lot of time at, uh, spent at, with them. Um, they have, she's currently not sick, uh, probably will get sick since her daughter has it. Um, so she will be outside most of the calls. She will be taking only origin matters or things that are um, critical uh, for, for the organization. So in case you all text her or she doesn't reply, 
um, you can know now that it's because of this reason. Um, she is perfectly fine. She just um, want to focus on her family as a uh, one shit. So uh, just sharing this with everyone so everyone is aware uh, for this matter. So uh, with the first topic of the agenda is an is a new orientation deck. Uh, so Jean, can you please click on the link and share the orientation deck if possible, please. Uh, so this came from the need to upgrade the orientation call. Um, the orientation call, I used to uh, use a HackMD um, document, which mm, ended up being a little bit limited. Uh, so I asked uh, ask Laser the favor of uh, trying to do some more graphic on, on, on this deck. Um, and he came out with this. Uh, I added some text and changed some stuff. So please, as a laser, don't, uh, <laughs> don't get mad at me. Uh, basically, it's to uh, add to the orientation deck this feeling that, um, this happy feeling, but at the same time, welcoming feeling, not so only only plain colors at the background. Um, so for example, go to the second uh, slide, please. And I stole this question out of um, ETC conference. I went to meet someone, and after I explained myself, he after explain after he explained himself, he asked me, "What are you building?" Um, and I felt that was such an inclusive question because I felt like it doesn't matter, like it doesn't matter who you are, you are doing something. You know, you are building something, personal life, professional life, something in in the DC, something outside the DC, something crypto, whatever it is. And I felt it was a really nice question uh, to start. So um, we will keep the intentions, but rather than, rather than distractions, oh, we change it to intentions and expectations from the call. And then uh, where are you building and where? The where is mainly to gather the, the time zone and where, this, where people are based at. Um, and then if we go to the next one, it's the MVV. I basically only take only took the main uh, points of the MVV, uh, and the idea is that in during the orientation call, uh, usually it's Nate, <laughs> but someone can explain the MVV um, in their own words, so it becomes more dynamic. I think LP, uh, they were the ones who suggested this uh, this tooling, and then the next one is the working groups. So. What we did with the working groups is clickable. All the working groups are click clickable on, on their logo and so on. Um, very simple. There's not much of explanation here. And then the next one, it's um, Discord server. Basically, uh, it's a little bit of what I'll be explaining with the hand signal. Uh, it's about giving people in their entry point the most clarified um, message and at the same time, um, how and how the things work here, you know? So the idea was that first, everyone is welcome to any call and, um, and the calendar meeting. And secondly, that, the, that it's fine to feel lost and that you, we have a database for meetings, which is the YouTube. So in the YouTube, you will find all the meetings. That, that was the, um, the main, that, that was the main intention there. Uh, on the next one, uh, we have praise, which Nate has been rocking on the past orientation call, which is we basically explain what is praise. And I took a slide to it because for me, the praise is one of the biggest assets that are not technical, that are not uh, developer related in the DEC. So the idea is that we explain the praise. Uh, and what I will incorporate is to, uh, in the spot, to praise someone from the call or to praise everyone on the call on the spot. And then praise maybe sound weird, so the glossary to just get you to the glossary and click on it. And then the next one is something that is also new. We are using Mao Manu, um, actually a weekly report on the working groups, uh, if that's okay for you, Mao Manu. And then it's clickable there. And the idea is that if people doesn't go to the community call every week, this will be updated, so people can click on what's going on on the working groups. Mo mostly as a tool to understand what's going on on the working groups. And if you see a task or something that you f you feel like supporting or that you feel like, oh, um, I understand the name Sofkov, but I don't know what Sofkov is actually doing. So the idea of this is that people can actually uh, take a look at it. Just one minute. 
yeah, whatever whatever gets people uh, <laughs> reading the weekly updates that I painstakingly spend hours crafting and sometimes they don't get views, that's fine. But whatever, I mean, I'd just like to share uh, it with the community. And I think it's a great way for people who uh, are lost in the DAO uh, rabbit hole to just three minutes of their time and and they will have catch up with uh, one week of work from the TC. So yeah, uh, whatever helps and whatever brings traction to it. And however I can uh, get more not- notoriety into these type of um, summaries, uh, I'm, I'm game for sure. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Mamadou. Yes, I mean, for me, this is key. Like, I feel this report that you do weekly is not seen enough. And the idea of this is that actually, rather than having some, that, that is something that we always give to the community, this is the entry point for a lot of people. So um, it will be like this way of people knowing what's going on because we, we provide description of the working groups, but we don't necessarily explain them what they are working on currently. So for me, this uh, report is what gives this uh, this context. It's to provide context. So um, as you are improving the this process of the report, for us, it will be so much helpful also in the orientation. So we can sort of, you know, straight to a point, pin people uh, on things. So and it's a weekly exercise. So we sort of can can uh, nurture both ways on on the process. So um, that's on that. And then, of course, community call. Um, I, yeah, community call. And then the next one, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, community call. And the next one is uh, very similar. Um, after you identify what's going on on the work groups with the money report, then we show you the send hub. So in case you want to go to it, immediately we can jump into it and either, either a label or either... Um, the ones that are labeled to contributors or not. And then, uh, yeah, of course, if you if people need one-on-one, then my handler, um, usually here will be also the stewards handler or like TAM handler in case if it's needed. And then the last, the next one, the next slide, it's this simple thing of enjoy your stay um, and see you soon. Um, so yeah, so I will pass it on one minute each one to provide feedback, things you would like to change. The link is also on the agenda in case you want to take a look by yourself or comment on the document. So I will pass it on to Nate. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I like the deck a lot. I think it's a lot easier to follow than the HackMD uh, document. Um, I think that one of the things, I'm, I'm not sure if you're including the uh, moment for everybody to introduce themselves and like post post uh, review of these document this slide questions, um, or if you're just going to add that kind of uh, ad hoc. Yes. So on uh, there is below praise. There is a pause for questions, and on the section for intentions and expectations, the idea is that when I ask what are you building, is that you introduce yourself a little bit. Does that provide context? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. And um, yep, yeah, that's that's good. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Um, can you pass it on to someone? Thank you. I will pass it on to Acid Laser. Thank you, Nate. Well, I made this with Edu, so I think it's, uh, it's the most amazing presentation I have ever seen in my life. So good. And uh, it's great. Thank you for considering me, Edu. And I pass it oh. to to Edgar. Uh, yeah. So I I, I love the presentation. Uh, use uh, I used to uh, something little in the page number four. It's. So it's irrelevant, but but the background it's black, and the token engineering logo it's black. So it lost a little bit, but it's okay. So <laughs> I love the presentation. Thank you, Edgar. Yes, the black. Yeah, you're right about the black logo. Uh, that's feedback for us, ladies and gentlemen. Got it. I posted. Oh, or what? 
Will you mind passing it to someone? Yeah, I pass it to Mount Manu. Okay, sure. Uh, sorry, what, what are we discussing? Uh, if you provide, if you want to provide any feedback to uh, the orientation deck that we were sharing on the screen. Uh, it's okay. You, I, yeah. you, you can pass. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have to take a look at it then. The, I can I can fill this uh, later on on the Google Doc directly. Okay. But yeah, I'll pass it to, has Aussie Cross gone? No, not yet. Welcome, Aussie Cross. Sure. If you are talking, Aussie Cross, uh, we cannot listen to you, um, probably your mic. So Hello. I will, yep. there you go. Welcome. Yeah, I, I joined a late, so I don't really know what the discussion is all about. Hello? Yes, no worries. Yeah. Um, basically, on, if you go to the Community Aspects channel and you click on next to the title, there will be the agenda. Uh, and basically, in the agenda, there is a link to our orientation deck, which is what we are discussing right now. And we are asking for, feed, for feedback for the presentation. So you can click oh. on the document. And on the document, you can also provide feedback by commenting on it. And it will be much appreciated. Okay, Robert, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll do that later then. Thank you. And I will pass it on to LV. Uh, no meaningful feedback at this time. Looks pretty good. I'll pass to Vai. I also don't have any feedback at the moment. Thank you. And Janacy, um, you are the last one to go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I consider that in, on slide on slide five, the number five, yes. There are two links there. There, I know that it refers to click there, but for me, it's not so clear because um, this part of the text is not formatting as a link. I don't know if I. Make myself clear. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, right. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. You're right on this. I think that if I the idea is that at the end of the deck can be sent through PDF. So my hope, uh, and as Elisa can correct me on this, is that if we send it by PDF, it will be clickable. Mm -hmm. But because there is a limit when, there. When you yeah. press at, uh, present in the top of the Google Slides. The the percent button, the the one that says percent. Uh -huh. Just click, and when you click the the link, it's automatic. Oh. Uh huh. Like this. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so what were you saying as laser, sorry? You can get to the link when you click, when you are in the presentation at Google Slides, not right. in the edit zone. Right. All right. Well, um, and the links work as well, I mean, without Going into it, you can just click it. You just gotta click it twice. So, next door. All right. All right. Um, okay. This will be. I will incorporate the feedback, and if any of you, I mean, we will test it out on the community in the orientation call this week for the first time. So we will see how that goes. And the idea is that we, it will be sent to everyone that assists the call afterwards. Um, so we basically, um, we don't have much to add this week. Um, I don't know if, um, as a laser, would you like to share the deck? Uh, sorry, the, the um, photo that you sent me on. 
did you work with Dulcaraz? And so everyone can provide feedback. Oh, sure. Give me a second. Mm. So the community journey, the newcomers journey with Durgadas. See it? You can see it? Yep. So I made the newcomer journey uh, graphic with Drogadas. He made the info and I made the graphics, but uh, I, I sent it to, to him to check the info, but he doesn't answer, answer me. So I really don't know if the info is good or not, but this is maybe like a final draft the infographic and i don't know what do you think this is about the pipeline about a newcomer at tc the five steps that that you are going to lead here in this amazing experience of tc awareness consideration participation retention and advocacy so if you want to i can send it to the community's channel so you can see the you can see the better and I don't know if, if, if someone has an opinion of this. It looks really nice, looks sweet. If yeah, if you could just drop drop it into the uh, community yes. so we can look at it more closely. For sure. Done. So it's about the things that that you think when you come to TC, when you're new, you are uh, knowing about the working groups, about the community, the workflow. Yeah, I go ahead. Sorry, it's 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 really professional looking. Okay. That has all the relevant. Bravo. The only, the only thing I have question is about the info, but Drugedas is the the master there. You have a little bit of uh, feedback. Someone for it. Right now. So I, I just the the document about the, the document Drugedas made too. Um, go ahead, uh, Nate. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I was just going to, um, one of the things that I was curious about was um, one part of the onboarding process is knowing exactly who to talk to when you want to join a working group. And I don't know if we have anything in place for that or if we can just give them a schedule. Uh, I really don't know. I am the only one listening to ACO. I hear the echo too. Um, as Lester, can you hear a little bit? It's mine. Echo. I don't know if it's at Lester or is it me. I think it might be as Lester's mic. Can you mute him on the server, Nate, please? Oh, he muted himself. So there it goes. There you go. Now, thank you. What were you saying, Nate? I, I couldn't listen to your question. Sorry, I, I was just in, in relation to that type of uh, roadmap is like trying to figure out where when, when people join the onboarding process, um, I think there's like a disconnect between like the next steps in terms of like where they want to be in terms of like what working groups should they join and who should they should talk to immediately because without having that, that immediate immediate next step for a lot of members. I think some people just say, okay, I'm going to keep going to the orientation and the community call until I start building relationships. And so um, uh, 
just having a step in there that that shows how to like kind of fast track that relationship building and saying, hey, this is the person you should talk to. This is the people you should engage with right right away. So responding to that, on um, um, there is another document on um, on there. There's two things: the document, the guides on guides, that serves the purpose of guiding and and link and someone a human a human guide will be the link in between someone's arrival and uh, someone working on in a working group. That's the idea. Uh, the second part is that on the survey that we sent via DM, uh, there is a question for people um, so they can mark what is their point of interest on a working group. So by that, uh, there will be a follow-up by another by a human guide who will, again, be the bridge in between, um, in between the person onboarding and the work group uh, contribution. Contribution. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you'll have some people ready to, to be that bridge. Yes, at the moment, uh, the bridge, it's me. But for example, Mao Mano has been doing that also on um, on some on some channels in Discord. And uh, the same for comms, like Mao Mano and Shui were doing this for comms. And, what we were doing, for example, I will send Shui a message when I saw someone in orientation data uh, who filled the survey and put it she was or he was a designer. Um, so I send it to Shui immediately. So the idea is that this there's a human link in between uh, contributors. Um, and then Aloysius, uh, they were also doing that. Um, they were welcoming and sort of being, being and point out people in the right direction. So the guide process works for us at the moment. I don't know if it is scalable, but it works at the moment. It's just that um, we still need, we, I, I created the, the, the tutorial or the guide for the guides in order to, to people to have the same kind of process uh, and where to go uh, to search for these people who are missing out, you know. Welcome, Durgaras. Sorry to put you on the spot. We are talking about um, acid laser design on your idea. Yeah, I, uh, it is putting me on the spot because I see that there's a bunch of things in there. Uh, I thought there would be about five times the amount of things that are in there, <laughs> but uh, I hadn't been able to talk to him about that. And so that's very much putting me on the spot. <laughs> um so yeah i i i don't uh yeah and and i don't have that much bandwidth to talk about it right now because i sort of okay. i would just be listening today is there anything that pops out um again uh, i would literally have to interrupt all of the urgent work that i was doing and hope that i could just skate on by by listening to people now i'm completely being asked to Put input on a thing I'm completely unprepared to give input on <laughs> at this moment. So <laughs> I have no bandwidth for that at all. It's okay. I mean, um, you cannot blame us for unsolicited advice anymore. No, no, I, no, I, <laughs> of course, I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm just, <laughs> I didn't know I'd be, <laughs> I'd be asked to, I would have preferred to talk to him about uh, that. It's okay. uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it's beautiful as it is. It's like all his other work. Uh, it's just um, in my head, I, I I always have a more complicated uh, idea of everything. So it is well, it is uh, <laughs> it is very nice as it is in terms of uh, what it, what it says. I just uh, and as an onboarding thing, it, it may be better that uh, you not hammer people with uh, incredibly complicated details uh, like I tend to put in. So it's probably uh, uh, perfect given the overall uh, context of the thing. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jigaraz. I think it, this will be a work in progress and this is the first iteration. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so no. after using after you with us laser and probably MS, um, it will take uh, a shape. So, but this is, Way better than two weeks ago that we didn't. We just had, um, yeah. you know, uh, uh, just a, uh, an idea. So mm -hmm. kudos to you and uh, Asalisa for working on this. And yeah, I mean, um, provide feedback on the agenda or privately to Drukaras or Asalisa if you have any. Uh, Nate, do you have any other thoughts regarding this or Mal Manu 
uh, people who has been part of uh, also this process of onboarding and or has assist to the orientation calls? Do you provide any feedback or anything you would like to comment on? No, I think it's a, I think it's a great graphic. Like we, the the point of this is just to to, to build the foundation for it and keep iterating on it. And so, um, yeah, I I think it's a great job, Asa Laser, and I really appreciate it. And I think that the more we more experience we have with onboarding people, the more informed that graphic will become. So, um, yeah, it, it's just about iterating. So, totally, it, yeah, it looks very good. good. Good uh, second revision uh, from my perspective, and uh, yeah, thank you. So. I I wanted to ask you before taking more time, more of your bandwidth, Durkaras, if you had time to think with Cesar on regarding the the use of the of the community survey for the community call to change it to uh, the other platform that you guys were thinking about. Uh, yeah, he asked me to do that. I w what I was sort of um, sort of saying back to him was that uh, I just keep having one-on-one -on -one meetings about HubSpot, you know, and uh, and so I'm just having to say the same stuff a bunch of times. So I was kind of uh, hoping that if we're going to talk about HubSpot, we could maybe I don't know onboard people or have an onboarding process for HubSpot so they can get oriented and figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's if it's just a simple form then then I can show them how to use the forms, uh, no problem. But I, I guess I'm just uh, uh, recognizing that um, I've had maybe sort of six one-on-one -on -one meetings where I'm explaining the same stuff over and over. And it's okay, but it's just given the amount of bandwidth and busyness, it would be more efficient for me if I could uh, have everybody gang up and kind of do an orientation uh, with every, all the interested parties at one time. So that's, uh, that's kind of a request from my side. Bit. But so there, there has been no advancement on uh, pulling out to HubSpot yet. Just to be aware of that, not not that I'm I. Sorry, I'm sorry, what? So there has been so the, the survey has not been passed to HubSpot. Uh, not yet. No, not, not as far as okay. I know. But the thing is, there are some structural questions to happen. So, do we want? Oh, okay. see, like like HubSpot is not a survey uh, software. Um, you could make a forum where you could say, here's the survey, right? But that is maybe not as good as, say, doing uh, SurveyMonkey connected to HubSpot with an integration. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a structural question we need to ask ourselves. If we're going to be doing a lot of surveys, we might want to use SurveyMonkey connected with HubSpot, right? That, I think, it would be a recommendation on my part. Uh, right. In terms of that, but there are, yeah, some structural questions, and I feel like if we were um, to have, uh, you know, Chewy and Nate and and maybe Manu and, and Caesar and all these things in, in a in a group where we could make that decision, you know, and so for now we're going to do the form, or you know, we'll do Survey Monkey later or whatever. You know, I just like to okay. be able to have those structural questions answered first. I, I agree with that completely. And I think one of the biggest yeah. challenges we've had is that the, the use of HubSpot spans so many different working groups. And so it's getting true. everybody on the same page and making sure that we're all informed on how we're going to be using and approaching it is that huge structural challenge that Durgadas has been been talking about and why he's probably been doing one on one six or seven right. times, which is which is <laughs> a big right. problem. So so we really yeah. do need to coordinate better between the working groups in yeah. terms of uh, making sure that you know people who are doing the website are, are involved and the people who gravity is involved in that yeah. onboarding yeah. communications. And so we, we really have to organize that and um, yeah, I'm 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 willing to help out with at least the organization part. I the, the onboarding aspect yeah. We just need to map out who's going to be involved in HubSpot, and those people need to show up to those to those meetings and, and get it done. And it's also for this reason that I, I sort of proposed that we have a like a system administrator layer where we have certain people who may or may not be also stewards, but people who carry maybe like a there are certain subject matter experts whose expertise reaches across a whole bunch of different working groups. So even the very idea of a working group tends to silo things in a certain kind of way, but I think there needs to be something that's sort of transdisciplinary in that sense. 
Um, right. And I kind of keep advocating for it, but I'm just sort of waiting for it to arrive. In some sense. Shall we shall we open a thread um, on communitas for um, creating a space within the calendar where we can weekly sort of uh, gather if there is something to talk or not, but gather on a weekly basis so we don't have six one on ones. Uh, and then we can just sync on that meeting for half an hour, and it can it can work as a soft onboarding for people who are not aware of the tool, and mm -hmm. it could be a workshop for uh, people who need to do things on, on on HubSpot. Does that work for you, Tukaras, Nate, or um, I mean, most most of the informed decision making will have to go probably through Dirk and us. I mean. Uh, you're the subject matter expert in this, and I think that uh, whatever time that you you figure out is good for you. I think we should just promote promote and find talk one on one with the people who need to be in that meeting and, and get it organized. Yeah. Um, and then and then from there we discuss how we want to to communicate and and facilitate the 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 building and development of HubSpot from there. But we have to have everybody on board. I would go as far as to say that it's, I think, useful to maybe in the stewards call to just talk about transdisciplinary subject matter expert slash, you know, because advice process, um, I don't know, it's weird the way we think about advice process, like, okay, I'm going to take advice process inside of this working group context. So we, we kind of end up with these little bubbles or silos, you know, so I just, yeah. I just think it, it would be useful for the stewards to say, what are the transdisciplinary um, subjects that we need subject matter experts to work on and as well as the siloed ones just so that we have a sense of you know it, it, just like I've been recommending I think it would be good to know that a working group is working on a complex Kinefin thing or a complicated Kinefin thing or a clear Kinefin thing or an automated Kinefin thing do you know what I mean it yeah. would just be good to have that and then from that then you can um, hopefully you know, make a secondary determination in terms of that. But I, I haven't yet seen that um, uh, sort of um, social vernacular occurring. Um, you can yeah. you can have it the next uh, store the agenda for topic to discuss, actually. Um, I think it could be quite helpful, to be honest. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, can I say something? Yeah, one, one thing that I wanted to add to that conversation is, like, uh, I think I, I had a sync with um, Gurkadas and we talked about it and uh, I, I just had a look with their API and it's possible to have like in integrated with Discord. So if we're interested in doing that, we can have like identities created while people mm -hmm. are onboarded. That's just That's right. a thought for later. Uh, instead and, of like having a mentioning, As I was mentioning in that call, that could also help with onboarding a bit where you can actually, within HubSpot, you can say, well, it would help with onboarding and would help with the transparency. You know, you guys could do, you know, an email report like saying, oh, like once a month, here's, you know, so we're always doing Discord calls to say, oh, you know, what's going on with this? And we do community calls and everything, but it might be great to take the summary of those things once a month and say, here's what happened this week, here's what happened this week, here's what happened this week with, you know, these working groups. And, oh, by the way, um, uh, so that would be a useful thing. But you can also automate onboarding in the sense where you could say, uh, day one, you showed up in Discord. Now we're going to fire you an email. Welcome to Discord. You know, day three email saying, you have any questions? Uh, if you're interested in this, talk to so-and-so. If you're, you know, and then a weekend to say, like, you can automate all of that inside of HubSpot. So it would help with the onboarding journey. And even though we would have follow-up things with respect to onboarding people, you can also do, you know, these automated things where it would give people a clue about that and uh, help with that process too, without requiring so many man hours from individual people. So so the only thing I would challenge on this is that as we start to, to develop these, you know, more tooling basically, um, and we try to integrate these toolings, uh, especially when, when they're centralized tooling like Discord and HubSpot and ZenHub and all this good stuff is that we drastically increase the complexity uh, that needs to be managed, and um, which means we need more, 
rise on each of these things to to create some form of a system of accountability if we're saying okay we're going to have a greater number of people who are accessing these these toolings and can alter and, and change the configuration of them it's true and that's part of the reason why i was suggesting that we not just have individual working groups but we have these sort of transdisciplinary slash administration sort of things so that you know uh where the stewards might hold uh you know a system in, or an administrative person sort of accountable there's just another layer of that that i feel yeah. we're missing somewhat so um so there is two actions the first is to coordinate a workshop for um for hubspot and the second one is to add it to the store agenda so we keep it on the loop um, is there something else can hear you through that, sorry. No, sorry, I, I uh, turned my thing on and then didn't say anything, yeah. so. <laughs> All right, um, we are on top of the hour, but before we finish the call, I will do a small exercise uh, to see how that goes. And the idea is that um, I just want everyone to respond to the questions, how are you? Um, so we live in a different note than usually on these calls. And we can take a minute each one. Uh, it could be personal, it could be vulnerable, it could be professional, if you will. And and I will start. How how am I? Am I happy? Am I happy to? Sorry, I am happy to be in Panama. And um, I feel a little bit embarrassed for this call to be so messy uh, because I'm in my phone on my car. So yeah, that's on me. And I will pass it on to Nate, and you can keep passing on. Yeah, thanks, Edu. Um, I'm doing good. Like, I, I feel good. Um, like, personally, I'm happy. I think that uh, I'm growing increasingly uh, stressed when it comes to um, <laughs> scaling this organization, um, uh, just because there's there's so much work that needs to be done or that is going on and that's required. And we have a lot of people who are willing to work, but actually coordinating those individuals to assist and, and to contribute is a very, very difficult task and a lot more difficult than I imagined it would be. Um, so, uh, yeah, but it's, I think we're, we're heading in the right direction. It's just chipping away slowly. But, uh, yeah, outside of that, I'm personally very good. And I'll pass it to 5IV. Um, what's the question? I wasn't present here for like a minute or so. Just, just how are you? Oh, generally, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, nothing special happening. Got a little bit sick last week, uh, which was surprising because I don't get sick usually. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll pass it on to Asset Laser. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of busy. I got a lot of work. Uh, but actually, yesterday I, I was listening to a new podcast that I find about illustration, and that podcast motivated me to to continue doing my my illustration, my my project about acid laser at Instagram, and I, I feel very happy for that because. I was needing that that kind of motivation, um, and I pass it to to Manu. Thanks, Tokayo. Uh, well, for me, I'm uh, I'm trying to find uh, um, find a way to work both in TC and Gitcoin. And uh, I don't want to do it partially for neither one of them. I want to give like all I can give professionally to both of them. So I'm trying to find a uh, balance in both of them. And uh, uh, I don't have social life, but I have a lot of digital friends. So I don't have real life friends. I have, I have uh, DAO friends. Uh, and that's cool. I'm, I'm happy. And uh, that's it. It's pretty much it, just trying to find a balance professionally. And 
I'll pass it to Durgadas. Yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> as always, busier than I'd like, more multitasking than I'd like. But uh, at the same time, um, yeah, I feel very gratified and, and uh, grateful uh, because it seems like um, the world is sort of picking up what I'm putting down uh, this last little while. And so it's given me an internal permission to just keep saying yes to myself. And I'm, I'm just really glad about that. And, uh, and uh, my relationship with Manu in particular, as well as uh, Sebnam and somebody and Juan who always. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, been great. So I really, uh, I'm quite happy, even though, you know, I I have almost always too much on my plate. So, um, and then I'll pass it to Aussie Cross. Hello, Austin Cross. We are asking everyone, how are you before we end the call? Are you there? If not, I will pass it on to Edgar. Uh, yes, so uh, I am very happy, really, really, really happy because like uh, two weeks ago, I get my my free job here in crypto. So that's make me uh, very much happy. <laughs> and, and I'm also happy because this is my, my last weekend on the school to before going to to vacation so, and in vacation I pretend to read a lot and do some courses about development so I'm happy really happy congratulations Edgar um, and I will pass it on to uh, Jean yeah um... I feel the same as mostly everybody else. Happy to be participating again. Um, was disappointed that I had to step away for a while from for uh, personal business, taking care of my mom who got sick, and then I got sick a little bit as well. So I felt bad to step away for a couple of weeks, but happy to be back and participating. And yeah, I am doing doing well now that my mom's okay and I feel better and. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back, Jim. And Janacy, will you make the honors to respond at the other one, last one on the call to answer, how are you? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, I feel awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy of always having the opportunity to talk with you guys, to see your work and how you are doing great things for the token engineers common. I really, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> and also because your ideas promote another ideas and so on, and we can grow together and that's all. I really value it. So thank you so much. Um, thank you, Nathan. And yeah, you're the one. And so thank you for that. Thank you everyone for joining this call. It has been a pleasure. Thank Next you, week, I promise less hectic and hope to see you around during the week. Take care. Bye-bye. See you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you.